Beast Wars Episode 4, Equal Measures. Now this episode, surprisingly, to me at least, was once again focused a lot on Cheetor. Um, they had a huge storm. It starts off like this big storm, like a crazy lightning strike. Basically destroys the top of a mountain, which I thought looked insane, but it was also kind of cool. Like a really tough lightning strike hits the top of this mountain and it reveals some energon. And so the Maximals are setting up these uh, pylons so that they can figure out basically, you know, how to survey, you know, the area. And this huge storm is coming in, and Optimus is like, you know, we're going to scrap the mission for now because we only have an hour to do it. And this junk needs to be insanely precise, and we need to make sure that we get everything perfectly right. And the storm could easily mess that up. And of course, Cheetor is like, you know, I could totally do it, I'm super fast, and yada, yada, yada. But he decides that he'd listen to Optimus, and then Dinobot comes in, and he's like, you know, I think this is, is kind of stupid. Like, you're definitely the one person who can get it done within the time that we have. I mean, hey, I think you probably should. And so, of course, being the young, brash character, Cheetor gets easily convinced. Not even convinced, really. He's just like, you know what? I was right, and you're right about me being right, basically. So he takes off, and he starts setting these pylons up. And, of course, it goes wrong. Like, he sets up the first one, and it was kind of cool. He set up the first pylon, and he got struck by lightning, and it knocked him down. And he basically yelled at the sky, like, is that supposed to scare me? And then another lightning strike gets near him. He's like, yep, and he takes off. And so he's setting pylons, and he comes across this valley of Energon. He hops over that, and then he's setting up a pylon. And as he's setting it up, another lightning bolt comes down, because it's a big metal pylon that he's, you know, lifting up in the air. It strikes him, and he, like, jolts. And, of course, he lets it go unnaturally, because it's television. It flips and lands right on the spike and cracks the ground open, and so it lands right in some energon. And, you know, he ends up getting teleported, actually, into the Decepticon, or to the Predacon base. Surprised that's the first time I actually did that. But he gets teleported into the Predacon base. He has to deal with whatever the name of the Pterodactyl one is. It, it's, it was the main one the whole episode, I forgot what the name was for him. But they did a cool reference to the old Dinobots because he would say all Sludge, and unless I'm mistaken, Sludge is the Pterodactyl Dinobot from G1 Transformers. So I thought that was cool that they have the Pterodactyl keep saying all Sludge. I was like, that's a cool little reference. Um, but Cheetor is in there, and he's going around, he's dealing with the Pterodactyl, he ends up dealing with... Um, Scorponok again, as well as uh, the Wasp character, which I don't believe was Waspinator. I think I may have been wrong about that because it, it it said it it said something about terrorize and when it transformed because they always say their names and then they say terrorize for the Predacons and maximize for um, the Maximals. So it's not like he just said Wasp, but it could still be Waspinator. I, I don't know. But he deals with the two of them again. He kind of runs circles around them. He ends up getting into a vent and so. The Wasp is just shooting rockets right behind him, like, just going straight up. And then Scorponok shoots, like, a homing missile in. So, Cheetor has to go backwards, jump over one of the missiles that the Wasp is shooting up. That missile connects with the homing missile from Scorponok, and it makes this giant explosion. Knocks both of them back, because it shoots out of the hole uh, that they made, so they both get knocked back. And he's running through this vent, and it kind of knocks him into a room. So he's still hiding from them. And as he uh, finds a computer, he's like, well, I might as well figure out what info they have. And he finds out that this survey line that they're um, using, actually, or the, the line that they're trying to figure out, you know, where is all, all the energy on that, this same line runs between both um, the Maxima and Predacon base. So if they use these, um, these pylons and survey everything, and they set up this bomb, which they were going to use to take out the Predacons. If they use that bomb on one base, it'll link because it'll basically set off this chain reaction of Energon all the way down this trail, and it'll blow up the other base. So he found out that they, if they destroyed the Predacons, or at least their base, because Optimus, this whole thing, he was talking to Dinobot, and it's like, I don't want to kill the Predacons, I just want to destroy their base, so they can't really do anything against us. His whole thing was like, I don't want to kill them, I just want to stop their base, and Dinobot being Dinobot had a big problem with that so when he finds out about this teleporting thing because 
uh, Cheetor, before he has to deal with Scorponok and the Wasp, he's fighting the Pterodactyl guy, and he gets teleported into the Maximal base. Dinobot finds him and learns about the teleporting, um, just, you know, the random thing with the teleporting happen. And he tells Optimus, like, hey, we can put this here, just put it on our console, it'll teleport into their base, and that's it. And so, of course, as Cheetor gets this information, which he beautifully takes out on the floppy disk, um, he places it on the platform, and it teleports to them as the bomb teleports to him, and he's like, oh crap, it's the bomb. <laughs> it's not only going to blow up in my face, but it's also going to blow up all of my friends, because it's going to go down this chain and destroy you know, our base as well. So then he gets busted again, because the pterodactyl guy got kicked out of the maximal base by Dinobot, who was like, oh, we can make an alliance. And as soon as he was like, oh, so all you have to do is touch it and you get teleported, he was like, great. And he put him in like a trash chute and he like shot him off, you know, over the mountains and stuff. So he made it back to the ship um, after telling Megatron they both find Cheetor. And he's like, look, I can disable this thing, save all our lives. He actually ends up doing that. And um, before Megatron can like kill him, he jumps on the thing and he teleports back to the maximal um uh, base and then Megatron uh, misses and he ends up shooting the um, shooting the thing so it destroys the teleporter. So it was a cool episode. It was really simple, but it was a lot of focus on Cheetor again. Quite a bit of focus on Dinobot and you know him having the serious vendetta against the Predacons and really wanting to destroy them because he doesn't care about taking out their base. He wants Megatron gone, and it wasn't too much focus on that. It was still. It wasn't too much character focus on Cheetor like the last one was, where he kind of learned a lesson, which he kind of didn't. Um, but it was still a lot of focus on him. And then Dinobot, instead of it being Rat Trap, it was Dinobot that was kind of the... It had, like, the lesser uh, story. But fun episode, once again. Really enjoyed it. Um, of course, highly recommended, so simply put. But it was a fun episode. And, of course, if you guys happen to remember the episode or happen to remember either Cheetor or uh, Dinobot, who is so weird calling him Dinobot because the Dinobots is a whole collection of Transformers in G1, so it's so weird because you have the Dinobots are like five Transformers. You got Grimlock, Sludge. I can never remember the other's names. I only remember Grimlock and Sludge. But you have like five Dinobots, and then having him just be called Dinobot is so weird to me. But... You know, I, I like his character, and I'm excited to see the continuation of his story as a traitor to the Predacons, joining the Maximals, and still having that conflict where he's not technically a part of their team, but basically he is. He's been there over a month now, so he pretty much is. But had a good time with this episode. Excited to get into the next one, of course. If you guys have any comments, you can put them down in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.